I remember an occurrence that happened a number of years ago when one of my children was very small and we were standing in a store and we were waiting online and one of my children had been nagging me, nudging me to buy them something and I kept on saying no, 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 we all know how this works and eventually I just couldn't take it anymore, couldn't take the fetching so I just said fine, just buy it and they put the item in the cart and all of a sudden there was someone who was apparently um, two people behind me in line who taps me on the shoulder and I turn around and they say, just want you to know, from my experience, you're making a big mistake. You're doing your child a disservice by buying them that. And I was just so shocked. Who, who is this person? That just some stranger randomly decides to rebuke me and tell me how to educate my children and that I'm making a big mistake? So I gave them sort of a half a smile and I just turned around. But I thought about it, it was on my mind. And when we read Parsha this week, the story just comes right back to life for me. And the part that really is so present in my memory is the idea that Yaakov Avinu came to the well. And it seemed that he started rebuking, he started giving Musar to the shepherds who were standing by the well. Here he arrives and he sees that there are shepherds who are standing around. And he says to them, Hey, od hayom gadol, the day is still young. Why is it that you're standing around? Go, let the, the flock drink and go out there, graze. And Rashi explains, well, Yaakov was concerned that maybe they were day laborers. And if they were day laborers, that meant that, you know, they couldn't just stop working at 4 o'clock if they were expected to work till 5 o'clock. They were stealing. So Yaakov was really giving them musr. He was rebuking them. And what's absolutely amazing is the response of these individuals to Yaakov Avinu. The response was, they explained to him, no, you don't understand. The reason why we're standing around is because we're waiting for enough people to come so that we could take the rock off of the well and that we can give our animals to drink. And what's amazing is why, why would they bother answering him? Why would they bother engaging him? Wouldn't they say to themselves, who do you think you are? We don't know who you are, we don't know where you come from, and all of a sudden you're just coming and giving us musr? How did this happen? What transpired? So Rav Yosef Kahneman, Zechat Tzadik Levracha, the Panovich Arav, was known as someone who was able to touch people with his words. People who were very close to him, people who were very close to Torah, and people who were further away, who were distant. And what he would say to them is he would begin his, his talk with them, wherever it was, with the words, Achim Karim in Hebrew, which means, my, my very special brothers, or in Yiddish, Tayra Briderlach, my special brothers in Yiddish. And so Rav Kahneman, when he once spoke about engaging people and being able to captivate an audience, he explained that he learned from Yaakov Avinu because the part that I didn't explain was that when Yaakov Avinu first came to the well, the first words that he said to these shepherds was, Achai, my brothers, me'ayin atem, where are you from? And with those words of Achai, my brothers, instead of being defensive, Instead of asking the question, of who do you think you are? All of a sudden, Yaakov Avinu was able to touch them in their heart so that when he spoke further and he gave them rebuke, they didn't see it as rebuke, but they saw it as a question. And they didn't become defensive. Instead, they explained an answer to him. How many times in our own lives do we find that people respond to us in a very defensive, a very curt way when we ask them questions that we may think or seem to be relatively innocent. The difference may be the tone or the approach that we use when we first engage them. If we show them that we're sincere, if we show them that we care about them, if we show them that we're coming from a place of love, then their response would be very different. Instead of a situation becoming escalated and becoming defensive, we have the ability to defuse a situation on a very simple, simple level just by reaching out with a smile, with a hello, with a how are you, how is your day? And this does not only apply to a stranger, it applies to our friends and our own family, our children, our spouses, our parents, our siblings. Our initial interaction can make the difference between a conversation becoming escalated and getting out of control to a conversation that really has the ability to be fruitful and really be constructive. Thank you for listening and have a good Shabbos.